Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which you're gonna learn several methods and techniques you can use right now to sprinkle a little bit of magic and groove into your finger style. Now, I'm gonna break down each technique, I'm gonna give you several musical ideas, and you can just steal them from me and make them your own. Um, they're really good techniques to know, and they enhance your playing and make you sound more professional. But before we start actually playing, I just want to give a short shout out to my good friend Leonardo. I told you about him. He makes these beautiful, beautiful handcrafted wooden capos. He's got a Kickstarter campaign right now, and yeah, I had them on my knee all this time because um, what else are knees for? Uh, and you can click the link in the description because if anyone deserves your support, it's Leonardo. He just makes these beautiful capos out of blocks of wood, just turns them into works of art, really. You don't want to use the capos, they're so beautiful. You just want to put them on a shelf and look at them because uh, each capo is a unique work of art uh, and you can personalize them and you can engrave them. And now he started making these uh, tuning handles out of wood as well. And he's just a wonderful guy and he puts his soul into his work. So he deserves your support. Click the link in the description, the Kickstarter campaign, and uh, get yourself a wooden capo, a handcrafted wooden capo. So, um, the first technique, okay? If, you, uh, if you're playing fingerstyle, you know that you have chords and you add the melody onto them. So, uh, what, what can you do to, um, to sprinkle a little bit of magic, of musical magic, and groove into a simple melody? Um, if you take a D chord, for example, and you have this melody. Okay, two, three, two, zero, zero, two on the E string. You already saw that I hammered on the two at the end. Two, three, two. Okay, I'm playing the whole chord. Two, three, two, zero, zero, hammer on to two. Okay, instead of zero, two, instead of playing. Okay, which would be kind of banal, right? So two, three, two, zero, two turns into two, three, two, zero, zero, hammer on to two. But you can also uh, do quick hammer ons and pull offs wherever you want to. You can play two, two, hammer on to three. Okay, and then two again. Okay, instead of two, three, two, you have two, a quick hammer on to three. Okay, and then zero, zero, hammer on to two. So you have a very distinct hammer on at the end, okay, and a very quick hammer on at the beginning. Okay, so you're more expressive that way. Okay, you're actually talking the musical language instead of reading a melody. Okay, and you can also do quick pull-offs. Okay, the same way, the same idea, very quick pull-offs, but requires a different melody. So if you have okay, if you have two zero on the E string, okay, three on the B string, and zero two on the E string, okay, you can hammer on that last note again. Okay? But you can also pull off the first. Okay, you can do two and then two with a quick pull off to zero. Okay? And it requires a bit of a conceptual thinking before you play it. You need to hear it. You need to feel that ta -tram, okay? You can sing it before that tam tram and then try it. Okay? And try to hear that uh, tram at the end there. Okay? And you can you can also um, use your body for it. Okay? You can move your head. Okay, it works. Look at great players play, they always move to the music because if you use your whole body to get into the music, it's a lot easier to play that way instead of being stiff and Okay, it doesn't look natural. Okay, you you get better dynamics if you get entirely into it. Okay, that's another great secret by great players. Um they're not afraid of looking foolish. They're not afraid of attacking the instrument. Okay, look at Tommy Emmanuel play. He's all in it. So, okay, sometimes that's all the difference. So that's also a great technique, okay, to get fully immersed in the music. Now, another technique would be to slide the chord. Okay, so, 
Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, if you have 3 2 and then 0 2, okay, you can do 3 2 0 and then slide the whole chord from 1 to 2. Okay? Okay? And then you get another expression, a completely different expression. And um, you can take this farther, actually. You can, uh, you can create a different line by playing... Okay? You can slide into the 3 also. Okay? The whole chord. Okay? Okay? You can do... Okay? You can change the melody as well. Okay? Who says you, you can't do that? You can change the melody if it sounds good to you. Okay? But if this sounds too, um, too strong or too uh, outside-y for you, then just, okay, just don't do that. Just do okay, the open E string and then slide into it. Okay? And you can do it with every chord. Okay? Okay? You can slide into every chord. Now, um, granted, some chords don't sound good when you slide them, especially, okay, especially bar chords. Okay? Because you kind of get a block of movement, a block of sound just moving in pitch. Okay? But you can remedy that as well. You can just hammer on notes. Okay? You can hammer on, for example, if you have the E-shaped bar. Let's take a G chord, bar on three. You can hammer on the chord. Okay? Now, it's a little bit bluesy, so it doesn't fit every composition and every piece you play, but that's where experimentation comes in. Okay, so for example, if you have C, you don't always open the second string. You don't always do... Okay, because this is C major 7, but you can add the 3 on the second string. Okay, so if you have... the hammer on on the first fret okay that creates a very very specific melody but if you add the three on the second string okay, it immediately adds flavor because it's the ninth of the chord and the ninth is uh, is less of a dominant sound than the major seven Okay, so um, that's, okay, let's recap first. You can do quick hammer-ons, okay, same for C, okay, instead of one, three, one, okay, you can do one, one hammer-on to three, one, okay, and you can do quick pull-offs, okay, especially if you have suspended chords. Uh, if you have the sus2 chord, the open E string, you can pull off into it. Okay? Just sprinkle it in there. I wasn't kidding when I said sprinkle a little bit of groove and magic. You don't want to overdo it. You just want to play it once or twice. You know, just give it space. Just play the chord and then sprinkle it in. Okay? And the same goes for slides. You don't want to slide every note. Even when you solo, Okay? It, it goes the same way for soloing. For example, let's take just 7 and 5 on the 3rd and 4th strings, okay? okay? You can do 5, 7, 7 on the D string, on the G string. You can slide, okay? You can uh, slide the 2nd note, okay? okay? Instead of playing it twice, okay? And you can pull off and slide into it, okay? You can do seven pull off to five, slide to seven, but an immediate slide, okay? And that creates an interesting sound, right? And uh, let's try it the other way around, okay? This is really interesting. Seven, hammer on to nine, slide to seven, okay? Sounds like a glitch in the recording, right? Okay? Um, Okay? Try both. Seven, 
pull off to five, slide to seven, and then hammer on to nine, slide to seven. It's really difficult to, to, to pre-conceptualize it. Okay? Yeah, it sounds like a mistake. Okay, but you know, it's just a cool exercise for the fingers. Okay? Try to loop it around. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel natural at all. But it just goes to show you what you can do with the guitar. Okay? Most people just play the notes. You want to express yourself. And uh, it's, it's the same for, um, let's take the D shape on 9, right? For A. So it's 9, 10, 9 with the fifth string. Okay? Okay, so. Okay, you can arpeggiate it and then slide into it. Okay? Or. Okay? And you can slap, of course. Okay, but when you use a slap, there's a really cool uh, rhythmical concept that you can use to instantly make it groovy. Okay, it's a slap and an immediate note. Okay, immediately picking the note. Let's let's go back to D. Okay, okay, you can uh, play the chord twice, slap, and immediately pick it. Okay, um, and. You know, um, I'm just using very simple rhythms, okay, and if you slap and pick with a slide, okay, that's a great exercise, and if you practice that, it becomes a natural part of your playing, okay, picking, uh, slapping and then picking, okay, chord, chord, slap, pick. Okay, so practice sliding at different times. Okay, each of these is a different expression for the same lick, the absolute same lick. And um, another way uh, to add groove um, is by muting. Okay? And muting is important because silence is actually a very important part of music. So you can mute using your picking hand. You can touch the, the strings before you pick them. Okay? Okay? Or you can stop pressing. Okay? You can stop pressing the fingers. Okay? Okay? And works great with bar chords. Okay? And the shorter the notes sometimes, um, the better the music. For example, Okay? If we take the previous example and shorten the chords, okay? and we play with the chord length um, itself and mute it in between, we, again, we play with the same lick, but we get a completely different expression. Okay? If we do, okay? that was a slide, then a very, very short note, then I slap, then I pick and let it ring. Okay? So, Okay, that's very, very different than, okay, than just letting it ring all the way. Okay, so it's something that you should be aware of. Okay, so, okay, or, okay, very short notes. Okay, I just stopped pressing. Okay, I'm playing G again. Okay, okay. Learn to use the short notes, the, the very short, short notes, and learn to mute it in time. The shorter the notes sometimes, you want, to, you want to have a medium length sometimes, you want to have very, very short notes sometimes, and sometimes you want to let it ring. But you should be aware of your intention. You should be aware of what you want to play. Don't just blindly play a chord and just let it ring all the time and play everything exactly the same way. You know what it sounds like. It always sounds the same, like... Listen to that for hours, but if you mute it sometime, okay, I'm just unpressing the chord and laying my fingers down to mute the open strength. Okay, so okay, it's the same rhythm. It's down, down, up, up, down, down. It's I, I'm strumming sixteenth notes, but you don't have to. Okay and I'm muted. Okay? 
Immediately, it's the same, uh, it's the same lick, a G chord, with the same rhythm, but a completely, completely different expression. Okay, and the same for a bar chord. Let's just take uh, C sharp minor seven. Okay, you can slide. Okay, I just stopped pressing the chord. And immediately, I get a sense of a riff. I get a sense of groove going. Okay, it's no longer just... which is just a carpet of guitar playing. It, it, it's meaningless. You want to give meaning to your music. So those are the techniques you can use and um, they sound simple, but when you use them in real time with compositions and actual melodies, um, they make a lot of sense. They start uh, taking over you and the more you get used to them, the better your expression gets. So check out Leonardo's uh, Kickstarter campaign. And I forgot to mention that his capos also come with this beautiful uh, canvas bag. And uh, you can later purloin it to your own needs. Uh, you can stash whatever it is you need to stash, be it a coin collection or a stamp collection or whatever, or just in case you need an extra purse. Um, it's just an added bonus. I, I love this bag. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't mean for us to love the bag uh, as much as I love the capo, but this guy is just spectacular. I love him. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you the next lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy.